Hey YouTube, Sam here. Well, we are on the fourth video now, and this one is going to deal with gear setup and the bushings that I bought and am using. Um, the bushings I got, I had to cut down and do some stuff to, but I, they're working out really good, I think. So uh, keep keep watching this video. Uh, yet again, I don't know. I could put this all together, and it could all completely explode for all I know. So, but. Uh, worst case scenario, you guys got a good look inside of one of these, where the gears go and how they go, but on this one it is going to be the setting up of gears, where each one of them goes, where the shims go, um, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, keep an eye, this one's probably going to be a good one for anybody that really needs to figure out what's inside of one of these. Alright, well, we got let's get the done. shifter fork here that shifts this piece right here. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side. That's just so you know kind of how it is in the case. Also, the chain will be going across here. Also, going to set that aside for now in the case. So that's how you know where we're at here, how these things are. So I'm going to start out and we're going to do this one right here. I'm going to pull it apart and then step by step show you how to Starting put it with back the bare together. shaft. And yet again, this is the part that the actual fork goes into here and shifts this back and forth. Now there's a fat side and a skinny side on here. You'll understand that when you can see it a little bit closer. You want the fat side to be facing inside. Um, then it, you got these two, uh, I don't know, fingers here. And one goes inside here, other goes inside on the top. This is the part that's a little bit tricky, but if you actually put these on the shaft first where they go, pull them out and then put that in here it's not a whole lot easier but a little bit easier definitely easier when you're not filming okay so we got that on there I'm gonna stick this in there as well and hope for the best all right now those will well, go on to the shaft here. Hopefully my head wasn't in your way there. And as you can see, there's just a groove here and a groove here. And that just those just right in the groove. Now mine was in neutral, which means none of the gears were engaged. Um, so I'm just going to leave it that way for right now. Then next, on this side, this is the one where the chain, the, chain, the sprocket that the chain hooks on. Uh, there's a side that's got a little bit of a outgoing bump here but it's fairly flat and then the side it's got kind of a pretty good sized divot the divot side goes on the inside and then it just seems to ride there there's not really a rhyme or reason for the divot that I can see although I guess when this comes out that probably yeah that engages with this piece here so there's the rhyme or reason then there's a collar here doesn't appear to matter which side that I can tell uh, so that goes on there. Then you got your uh, bigger sprocket here that rides on. There's some teeth right here, and that rides in there. Then you got a little washer that goes on the outside. Now, this is where you're going to have this piece here, a uh, little collar, and that will actually, so I got it the wrong way, right in here. Uh, I, this one is shot, so I'm replacing mine. Um, I will show you those parts at the end because those really don't need to go on until the end anyway. So, but just for your knowledge, that is the part will go on the outside. I got that side done. Now we start on this side. You start out actually with a washer. Now these washers are special washers, so don't lose them. You can't just throw any old washer in there. Um, they actually have kind of a ramp right here, for lack of a better way of saying it. Uh, that kind of rides up like that and that's for these teeth to ride in and uh, go up underneath so that's fairly important that those are riding first of all towards the inside here we're going to start out with this one towards the inside towards these fingers right here okay and then we're going to take the bigger of all the gears and put that on next now it has a flat side and an indented side. Indented side actually goes out towards the end of the shaft. And those right in there. Take the next bigger one. You got the next washer actually. Same thing. The, the ramp here 
needs to go towards the washer and it actually goes into the indention of this um, sprocket here so same thing now you got the next biggest gear <clears throat> indention towards the outside of the shaft then we got another washer here ramp towards the inside next sprocket ramp towards the inside next one and then you got the smallest okay. one here and then this is just a regular washer I mean I don't know could be special for all I know but it doesn't have the ramp and it's got a smaller hole here because it only goes on the smaller part of the shaft here and then again this is where you're going to have another one of these that's going to go on to here and this and is this actually where I ran out of battery right at the end uh, but what I was saying basically is that's where this piece goes here uh, the brake piece um, but you don't need to put that at least on my tractor I don't need to put that on until after it's all up and in the tractor for all that matter. Um, so uh, you'll end all in with this piece here yet again got to put new ones on uh, yet again I got to do some stuff with those I'll be back about these tell you where I got them and what I'm gonna have to do to make the ones I got work I hope uh, I got to test them out a little bit to make sure so that puts that shaft so we got together. this next shaft uh, one side you got several teeth over here and the other side is mostly shaft with a couple just one set of teeth here so we start out with the uh, sprocket here that the chain rides on and you got one side's got a short or a flatter side it's got a little bit of a bump another side's got an obviously sticking out side the st part that's sticking out goes to the inside of the shaft then we have another washer here and quite honestly I don't know if it really matters which way it goes but I'm going to put it this way because it looks like that's been riding that way you can kind of see like a little area right here where it's been kind of riding on that so I'm just going to go ahead and go with that then you're going to have this bigger sprocket here it's a big fat one the one has one side has kind of an obvious uh uh, ground down side over here I guess you would call it um, and the other side has bigger teeth so you got one side with bigger teeth one side with smaller teeth and this side's ground down a little bit you also have these o-rings in here and there is also needle bearings inside this I'm hoping you saw that there's needle bearings inside this so I'm gonna have to grease this all up too but for now this is just kind of putting it together your o-ring kind of pops down in there it does seem a little big but once you get the uh, get it on the uh, washer here it does seem to push in okay and it does seem like a fairly snug fit on here so and that might pop out but as soon as you push into the washer it, it stays on there then you got another one on this side that also same thing goes in and then we got our bigger sprocket which actually rides on these teeth here and it doesn't appear to matter what direction this goes um, I am going to kind of look at it a little better and later on if I do find that these matter what direction they go I will tell you um, then you got another washer here which will push in that hopefully push in on this see there's that o-ring and it's kind of these o-rings are kind of a pain in the butt And we'll put the washer on there and then on this side there's actually a needle bearing I don't know why they didn't just do this everywhere I'm sure for cost but for some reason there's a needle bearing on this side and it does have a washer here so when you clean that you have to pop the washer out only problem I had with that and yet again I'll have to grease this as well but uh, only problem with that is I find when I push this on here the pressure of it actually tends to pop that uh, wa that gasket out of there so yep, you heard it pop that gasket so. just kind of pops out there see it just popped in so it could be that pressure kind of helps it ride a little bit outside there I'm not positive when this is all in there it'll be it'll be cinched in the case I believe the case kind of holds all this in so all that will be squeezed together and I will like I said you'll have to grease all these things inside here all right now let's go on to this side and the first thing is this big sprocket here and that goes this way you got kind of a 
a dish side on this side and it comes outward on this side and your your main teeth are over here towards the inside of the shaft so um, it's kind of a strange looking deal but that's the way it goes then with this one we go smallest to biggest so we start out with this little guy here and I am not seeing where it really looks like it matters what direction these go yet again if for some reason I find out that is not incorrect or that is incorrect I will tell you all and there's no washers in between these or anything they just all kind of almost stick together they're kind of difficult to get apart once they're on so there you go smallest to biggest yet again on this side you got another one of these which the the this flat piece uh, that sticks out always goes to the inside here at least on mine um, and then it rides into the I'm case stick there. this in here and, uh, I forgot there's another washer that goes on the outside of that before this goes on just so we're caught up like here. I said yet again I'll have stories on this later so there's your shafts right there uh, this uh, just fell apart but uh Luckily, I have a good video I can watch to see how it goes back together. Anyhow, this is going to be going in this area right here. And originally, it had one of these on here like that. And it shoved in there basically like that. Now, I could not find these anywhere. I'm sure I could find them online somewhere, but I just I need to get this done and put that together. So I went to a local, uh, it's called Brown Bearing really super nice guys there and they've helped me out a few times when I couldn't find those weird things that I needed to find uh, I don't know if it's just a local place around here but they've been around here since as long as I can remember and maybe even longer than I've been around anyhow by doing measurements we found these now the only problem is as you can see they're quite a bit longer and this part here I believe might be a slightly fatter but some of that might be the fact that these are been worn pretty good too is what I'm hoping and I'm hoping there's enough tolerance in here that I can use these now they aren't the same uh, made out of the same material but the guy said what this stuff is actually impregnated with stuff to help it wear better and be basically slicker so it might actually be an upgrade I if need these to do work. first so let's figure out what I need to do to fit these in here and the first thing I need to do something is else I should say before uh, you go out and buy a bunch of these and start using them uh, they do have a little nib the, the original ones had like a little bump out right here it's a little triangle on the side and that's it has a corresponding space in the case that that sits to, it's supposed to keep these from turning um, so it, that could be something that will absolutely be a huge problem with these we'll see um, but I do know that sometimes if you don't get those right or if you're not paying attention or they move when you're putting your case on that this can keep the case from closing as well uh, so if you're going back with original pieces don't forget that those have to be and every single one of them has some sort of a corresponding type thing like that on them just for your info yet again with mine they're going to be different. I get a phone call. To make this work, I got my, yet again, Harbor Freight uh, calipers here. And on the end of that, when it comes out, there's a little dilling the whopper here. And I'm going to attempt a couple of these now so I think I got it pretty well down and I uh, am waiting to go to back to the place to get some other stuff until I make sure I don't screw one of these up of course now that I'm filming it I probably will anyway there's the bushing right there that I'm replacing those with um, according to the brown bearing that is the number if you can read it it's, I think it says ISO F it's either EF or FF dash B one two one six and I think it's 12 piece which there was probably 12 pieces in here maybe at some point anyway that's what I believe it is uh, if not you have to look for something that looks similar to that that's exactly the same size as what you have only they are too the long. first thing I gotta do is actually mark it and so what I'm doing 
is actually I got this set for 720 which is what I decided I need and I'm going around and just scribing this all the way around. Now I'm not going to do it on camera because it would be too difficult to do that but that's that's how I'm marking it just with that back piece marking it. I got this locked down at 720 and that is the size for the ones I'm doing. Yet again I would highly recommend waiting a little while if you're doing this same project and you can uh, and see if this works because these may not work at all we'll see even if I get them in they may not work they may just spin in there and ruin everything. I don't know if you can see it there's a little line in there I can see it alright now this is where I say do anything I do uh, and hurt yourself I'm not responsible if you don't like the way I'm doing it don't do it uh, but I got this just bolt here basically it's got a different kind of end on it but I don't care if I nick it on for some reason and I'm just sticking that on there I'm gonna start this up and I'm just gonna carefully go so around like in a little better spot here but anyway I'm just kinda resting my hand on here and I'm just going around and I'm just cutting this all the way around um, I know there's probably a million other better ways to doing it but this is the way I'm doing it watch your eardrums If you got sensitive fingers, that can get kind of hot there, so be aware. Um, and I didn't cut that directly on the line. Now I left a little bit, I can still see the line, well most of it. There's a couple places I never do, do a great job, but anyways, um, I can still pretty much see most of the line. And it doesn't really matter if it's perfect, it really doesn't, because where this is, the shaft isn't actually riding back in this area. And these are actually, I'm cutting them longer than the original ones so they actually have a little less tolerance in the uh, the end here so I'm hoping they'll stay a little bit tighter alright now I'm over here and uh, I just got this file here and I'm taking it and I can tell that this piece here is longer than the rest by quite a bit so I'm just kind of grinding off one, one side at a time now you could use, in fact the first one I used uh, my grinding wheel uh, and I decided that was just taking too much off. This stuff's pretty soft and uh, doesn't need a lot. I'm just setting that flat on there and I can turn it around and kind of tell that this piece here is sticking out. See if you can see this. Yes you can. Yeah, we're getting closer. And you're gonna have to fiddle with it till you get it pretty close to straight. And then once I got it pretty close to straight, I'm just kind of running it just to kind of file off that end flatter. Then I got this, uh, I don't know if it's a chainsaw file or what it is, but I'm just using it to kind of get the inside. Now try not to nick up anything real far in here. Um, I'm just kind of getting at an angle and kind of just getting the bigger burrs off with this. I don't really want to hit this with and file it down with this file because this file is a little bit too much. I want to keep it as smooth as possible obviously but like I said it won't be riding in this area too much um, and when I'm done here what does hit it will be all right and I got another file here I mean uh, it's got kind of a flat end on it and I can kind of tell like if I need to get something like right there I need a little bit more and you're just going to go through and uh, f file this down until you can you're all far. done with it <laughs> and then I just kind of take the file and just kind of file over this edge with and this is a fairly light file and quite honestly on the outside I'll show you that in a minute I'm actually going to take this and scuff this outside edge up because I do not want this to be slippery I don't want it to move in there so I'm also kind of letting it hit this outer edge here too just to kind of keep it from hopefully sliding around too much in there 
And then when I'm all done, I got this, which is what I use to uh, sharpen my knives and things like that. I'm hoping this crud doesn't mess it up, but it's the softest file I have, and I'm still keeping an angle. I'm not going on the inside where I haven't really got anything. I'm just kind of smoothing this off real good inside here, best I can. And I got our first kind of snafu here and I kind of suspected this might happen um, now on this one we got it all in there it's going good pretty good I actually did take off right here a small shim that was in there washer this side it doesn't really matter well it may this is one of those things yet again if you do something I do and mess up your equipment I'm not responsible um, but uh, that pretty much took up that little bit of space there and this is right in here real nice not a ton of slot but enough um, but over here as you can see I can't get this one down in there and I did take a shim off this side but the shim on this side actually holds this gear from falling that way so I'm either gonna have to find a smaller um, uh, washer or something that'll fit on there that's the same size but thinner or I'm gonna have to grind this down a little bit which I may end up doing. But I've already pretty um, much remedied the situation I've gotten this ground down to where it um, is pretty well fitting in there real good and I started out I just got some old sandpaper pieces that I had uh, lying around and I started out with this hundred grit right here uh, now I got some and I just did that dry until it pretty much fit um, now I got some 320 that I'm going to go around and I actually took it and did this with the 100 grit too. I got, oh, I got a piece of glass here. It's a, a piece off the front of one of those, uh, oh, what the heck kind of lights are they? Halogen lights, um, that I don't no longer use. And that works real good as a nice flat surface to, uh, just take this down on basically and I don't want to take too much down because like I said I got it pretty well close but I mean that just smoothed that out I probably don't even need to go any further than that but I will now something else did, I did I'll show you later on the back part here what I did um, but boy that really quickly flattened that out so I'm not even going to go further because I really don't want it too much smaller I might have went too far as far as that here's some 600 grit some soapy water And quite honestly, I think this is probably where I'm going to stop at because that is just smoother than, than it was before, I think. And smooth is good with me. I am going to kind of take the edges off here a little bit. I'm actually going to take this and kind of go along in here too and smooth some of this edge up here. But again, responsibility is not mine if you do something and hurt yourself that I do. Okay, and what I did here, I actually by hand made this go, and I just kind of took it across this blade right here, across this back part here, because I was feeling like I was just getting too much grinding going on here. I was afraid I was going to lose the flatness of it, and I figured I don't really care if this is super flat. I want this to grab a hold of that case and not move uh, all said and done, so I did end up taking the back end off. All right, and here we are. Now there's one here and one over here. Hopefully you can see that, one over here. And I have taken and I filed these the edges on these ones down um, as well, just to kind of give them some tooth there. And uh, and we're gonna stick this in here. Got this one in here. Now, as you can see, there's still a little bit of, you know, movement in here. I got a pretty good, but it's side to side on the shaft is almost nothing, which is what I want anyway. Now, when I did this before, um, as you can see, none of them were moving. Uh, this one was moving quite a bit, so I filed that edge down there, and I actually ground down a little bit on this side, just this side, because I really don't want to mess with this one here because I took that uh, I took the washer out of this side here so this is kind of acting like the washer so I really didn't want to grind on the uh, on this side here I want this to be original but I did grind some off on this side just to kind of make sure that I wasn't 
moving this back and forth too much and getting it out of sync on the teeth as well. Um, so I just ground a little bit off this, ground quite a bit off of this one. Um, and it's all, it's really good in there. I'm, I'm real happy. Now that started moving again. So I am worried about those moving on, there, on me there. But once they get to a certain spot, they tend to quit moving. So I, am, I might do a little bit more uh, grinding on these. And I do have one more plan to hopefully keep these staying where they are. Uh, yet again, you know, honestly, by the time I put all this work into everything and grinding and this, I probably could have ordered the right stuff if I would have taken the time to look online and find all the right stuff. But I was afraid I would order it and end up ordering it three, three times because I didn't get the right stuff. And also, I just wanted to get it done kind of thing, so I was trying to do local. Quite honestly, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably go to order the stuff up and just uh, get it done that way. Probably would have been six, one half a dozen other, and I would have had the right bushings in here. But right now, I am quite happy with that. Honestly, well, YouTube, uh, that's the end of this one. Yet again, we've got at least one or two, if not three more, to go uh, to get this into the tractor. But I do think this one was a very important one to watch if you watch no other, um, just because it is mostly setting up the gears inside, which is something that'd be very confusing uh, had you not already known it. Anyhow, um, how to, if you take everything a, a bite at a time, uh, anybody can figure anything out. All right, this is Sam, Jack of all, master of none. You all have a good one.